Hey guys, William Justice here, and I'm ready to start continuing my journey on um, video making, creating effects, and learning a little bit about DaVinci Resolve. I've been away for a bit, working on a, another project, and maybe I'll have some information to share about that uh, in the near future. But today, we're gonna be talking about some particles. So I've been working on a new video featuring this guy right here. It uh, uses particles, and I've been doing a lot of experiments trying to learn um, how the particle system in Resolve works. So I thought I'd do a quick video to show a few of the different things I've learned. Um, really, it just takes a little bit of playing around with some of the different options and you can create some really interesting effects. So today we're just going to talk about a few of the basics and some of the things you can do with particles. We're going to do a uh, particle reveal, a particle text animation, and just go through some of the different options. Yeah, this is something that really you kind of need to play around with it and I'll show you some different things that you can try out. You can go to my website, buildjustice.com, and download a lot of the fusion effects that you're seeing in this video. Um, they're just kind of some experiments. To try them out, all you need to do is download the zip file and take the dot settings and drag it right into the fusion area, and that will get you started. If you enjoy videos like this and are looking for some ideas, want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve or editing, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Like this video and comment below to let me know how I'm doing. Okay, let's make some particles. Okay, then we're gonna do a really quick run through the particles. Then we're gonna show you how to set up the particle text animation and kind of do a reveal of where those particles are. So to get started, um, we have a blank fusion composition. We're gonna add in a background and connect that up to the media out. So there's our background. So the, the particle nodes are right here. We're gonna take the first one, which is the particle emitter. Then we're gonna take the last one, which is the particle render. This actually creates the particles. We're gonna take the emitter and put it into the renderer. And then we're gonna take the renderer and drag it right into the output of the background to create a merge node. And you can see we have our particles right there. So let's take a look at the particle emitter to see the different things we can do. If you're not seeing the words and icons, right click here and select show icons and labels. It's a little bit easier to know what's going on when you can see what each of the sections is. The first section is called controls. This sets the number of particles that are created on each frame, how long they live, which is the lifespan. This is how many frames they live for. And there's some different options in here to vary things. You can set a velocity, rotation, and spin. But we're just gonna look at this right now. So let's set the number of particles to 25 and the lifespan for 25. So it's gonna create 25 particles each frame and they're gonna live for 25 frames before they disappear. The next thing we're gonna look at is the region. This sets where the particles are emitted on the screen. So right now it's a sphere. You can see that all the particles are emitted inside of this circle. We can adjust the size. You can choose all kinds of different options. You can have, um, you can have them created along a line or a rectangle. Um, for now, let's just choose all. So this is going to use the entire display to create the particles. Okay, now let's let's get into what the particles look like. Let's click the style tab. So right now the style is set to point, and you can see that each of the particles is just this little bitty dot. That's not very interesting. So let's change that up. There's some different options here, but we're going to choose ingon, and this lets us create a custom shape. You can see right here. So we're just going to click this circle right here. You can change the color, size, fade, all kinds of different options. So let's start out with the size. We want them to be a little bit bigger so that we can see them. Set it to like, a, say, 0.5, or let's let's set it to 4. So you can see these particles are really big right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the size of our life. This lets us add some variability. So we're going to bring this down and then bring it up. And what you're going to see is the particles start small, and then they're going to get bigger. So they're going to start small and get bigger. We can adjust this curve. Let's pull this up right here and then bring it down. And we're gonna hit F right here to smooth that curve out, to flatten it out. The particles are gonna start out small, they're gonna get bigger, and then they're gonna shrink down right before they go off the screen. Okay, let's take a look at the fade controls. That'll kind of smooth some things out a little bit. So we can bring this in and bring that out, and that means it's gonna fade it in and it's gonna fade it out right before it goes off the screen. So let's take a look at what we got there. You can see the particles are fading in and fading out now. Let's adjust the particle colors. Let's close the size and fade controls, and we'll go into color controls. You can just set a color, any color you want, and then the, all the particles will be the same color. We'll reset that. There's a color over life, which lets you change the color as the particle ages. So we can click here, and you see this little triangle, and let's we'll start with a, like a blue particle. And we'll click right here in the middle, we'll create another little triangle for us. That's another color set. And we'll go ahead and make this one, let's uh, maybe kind of an orange. And then at the very end, let's make it uh, kind of a green. 
the particles start out blue, they kind of go to an orange, and then they finish up green. And you can adjust where these triangles are to adjust the when they transition. All right, let's close the color section and open up size. Let's make the particles a little bit smaller. All right, now I'm going to show you a couple other things you can do to add some movement to your particles. So I'm going to move the emitter over here. With the particle emitter selected, hit control space and type in P directional force. So this is going to add a movement to the particles. Right now they're moving at negative 90 degrees. You can change that. You can move them in any direction that you want by changing the angle. So you can change the speed. Let's take a look at the conditions. This allows you to set which particles are going to be changed and when. So the first thing is you can do the probability. If we put it at uh, say 50 in the middle, there's a 50% chance that the particle is going to be affected by the directional force. So I mean, some of the particles are affected and some aren't. So if we drop it back down to zero, the particles aren't affected and we move it up. We're just going to have a few of the particles start moving. We can do the same thing with age. So right now they're all moving. We can bring this up and the particles will only start moving when they get to a certain age. And right now it's about 0.5. So about halfway through their lifespan, they're going to start moving. You can see some of them start dropping. Another option you have is a turbulence is to kind of do some random, random movement. We're going to hit uh, control space and type in P turb. That's P turbulence. And this is just going to move all the particles around in different ways. So we can um, bump up the X strength and they're going to, you see they move in the X direction or the Y, Y direction or both. So there's just some basic movement stuff that uh, gives you some options to play around with to get some different effects. Okay, so let's get rid of the turbulence. Okay, so how do we put this particle animation inside of some text? It's time to make some particle text. I'm going to show you how I did a lot of the text effects from the intro of this video. All of these effects use, all of these effects use the same basic setup. So we're going to take a background and put that into the media out. We're going to add a particle emitter and a particle renderer and connect those up. Connect the output of the renderer and merge it in with the background. So for the um, particle emitter, we're going to go to the region setting and choose the region to be bitmap. And that's going to add this input right here. So we just need to add text as an input to say where we want the particles to be emitted. So let's add a text node and connect that up to the emitter. And let's set up the text. You can see it's, uh, the particles are starting to fill in right where the text is. For this, you want to have a thick font so there's lots of room for the particles. And let's make it a little bit bigger. All right, that looks good. Let's start making some adjustments in the emitter so we can see the particles a little bit better. Go to the style. We're going to set the type as ingon. Choose this circle on the end. And let's make the size bigger. And then we're going to adjust the size over life. So we're going to have it start small over on the left. We're going to have it get bigger. And then we're going to have it get smaller toward the end of life. Next, let's go to the fade controls. We're going to have it... Uh, fade in and fade out for each of the particles. Okay, on the controls here, let's adjust the number of particles. Let's have a 100 particles and the lifespan is gonna be 25. So they're gonna come in and out a little bit faster. All right, let's adjust the color. Um, we're gonna to go to the emitter style. In the color controls, we could set a color right here if we wanted to. So we're gonna have some yellow particles. But what we're gonna do is come down to color variance. We're gonna take the red, green, and blue and vary those colors. And then we're gonna uncheck lock color variance. And let's reset this to white. And now we have some colored particles. Now here you can adjust everything. You can adjust the size, make them bigger and smaller, really do whatever you want. So let's add a soft glow in here. And that's what that is gonna do. It's gonna blend some of these particles together. So right after the particle renderer, we're gonna hit control space and type in soft glow. And kind of we have this kind of look. You can adjust the, the gain on the soft glow and the glow size to kind of get some different looks. Okay, now to get the to get the particle reveal, all I need all I did was added a rectangle mask on into the text, get it down to about the size of the text, like that. And we'll give it a little bit of a soft edge. And all I did was animate it. So you go to the first frame, and we're gonna take the rectangle and move it all the way off the screen hit the keyframe, and then we'll go kind of into the middle of the animation and bring it back. This is how you set up a particle reveal. Okay, let's get rid of that rectangle and uh, let's see, play with the turbulence. So on some of these, I added a turbulence node here, control space and type, look for P turbulence, and we'll boost up the strength of the turbulence and the density. It kind of goes a little crazy. You can't see the text. To fix this, we're gonna go to conditions. You can adjust the probability 
or what we're going to do here is adjust the age. So the particles are only going to start being affected by the turbulence when they're uh, toward the end of their life. So most of them are going to be staying in place. Now you can't see those right there. So what we can do for that is let's go back to the emitter and let's go ahead and make the particles bigger when they're um, toward the end of their life. So we'll be able to see them fly off a little bit. And let's increase the, uh, the turbulence here. So they'll fly a little further. Really, you can just play around with these different settings to get some different looks. All right, let me show you how to get that burned in look. So let's uh, disable the turbulence there. We're going to take th these and move them down. And right for the soft glow, we're going to add a merge node. We're going to take the text and merge it in right there. And you can see it's on top of the particles right now. And so we're going to, we need to flip these inputs with the merge node selected hit control T and you'll see the particles are now on top of the, of the text. So let's go back to the emitter and we're going to clear out all of these settings. For this one, we're just going to use a solid color. So let's pick this blue color. So right there, you can see all the particles. Let's make them a little bit bigger. So to get this look, what, what I did was you come down in here under merge controls and you set the burn in to one. And you can see how they're starting to come together, the particles, and they're creating that dark spot. Um, you can make this darker. You can make this darker by increasing the pixel size. So all you need to do is adjust this down until you get the look that you want. And then come into the soft glow, and you can adjust this also. So you bring the soft glow down a little bit to right where, right where you get it. So you can kind of see it. you got that little burn in look. I like that. Now with this one, you can adjust the particle speed, how many particles there are. There's a lot of different things you can do. Okay, next let's take a look at the one where the particles would come together to form a word. So what I did for that one is it actually plays in reverse. So let's, um, let's put this back to 0.5. Okay, so we got our particles in there. Let's get rid of the burn in. Let's go ahead and set the color back to white. We're going to bring up the color variances on the red, green, and blue. Right there, as you can see our particles on there. So for now, we can just disconnect this merge because we're not going to need it. Bring this off, go back in. Okay, so... To get this to explode, what I did is I used the turbulence. I'm going to put that back on and crank these up and crank up the density. Okay, so we got particles all over the place here. So they start exploding out like that. So what you can do is go to the particle emitter. We're going to go to the controls and we're going to go to the very first frame. We're going to set this to be, let's say, um, 500 particles. We're going to set a keyframe. We're going to go to the next frame and bring that all the way down to zero. So basically there's 500 particles created on the first frame. And we're going to set the lifespan to be longer, about the size, about the length of, about the length of the composition, which is 115. So let's, uh, we'll just go ahead and set them to 110. And let's play it. And you notice that the particles are not moving because we, we, in the turbulence, we only move them um, when they were halfway done. So we want them to start moving from the beginning. So let's break that out. Okay, so bring the bring this down a lot. Reset these. Okay, there we go. So make it a little bit a little bit stronger. Um, one more thing. Let's go back to the fade controls here, and because we want to be able to see it right when it starts, and bring the size up like that. Okay, so now we can see it. So go back to the turbulence. We're gonna go to the first frame. Those are the those are the particles that were created, and then they start the turbulence starts moving away. So to get it to come together, all you have to do is, after the soft glow, put in a time speed node. So hit to control space and search for time speed. And just set the speed to negative one. And that's going to play the whole animation in reverse. So it's going to start out with the particles expanded, and then they're going to come back together to form our word. And then just to get it to fade into the word, I took the, uh, the text and merged it in right here and faded this in and faded the other one out. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you was the uh, the lines because that was kind of an interesting effect. Um, we'll go to the emitter, and for the style, we're going to choose line. And what this does is it makes these little bitty lines here, and we're going to make them bigger so we can see them. Uh, a little bit too big. So we got the, the lines bring them down a bit, and I went to the controls and did a spin and adjusted the spin on them like that. So we have all these lines spinning and exploding and they come together just like that, real simple. And they would come to form a word. Anyway, that's the, the basics of how I did a lot of the animations. It's all based off of this, um, basically same setup. You, I used some turbulence on some, um, directional force on others, 
And there was a few where I added in um, some rays. So I so hit uh, control space and type in rays. And we'll add that in. And you can see that the, the rays, it kind of creates an interesting effect. You can adjust the, the settings with all this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about particles. Um, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to try out some of these effects for yourself, you can download the settings files for the fusion animations from my website, buildjustice.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Thank you.